from Nutrient Ag Solutions. I'm Senior Meteorologist Andrew Pritchard with your Canadian Prairie Weather Story from Monday, March 13th, 2023. A pair of subtle disturbances here, bringing some snow north of the prairie here Tuesday, Wednesday, and then across parts of central and southern Alberta, maybe far southwestern Saskatchewan Wednesday and Thursday, perhaps picking up anywhere from a dusting to maybe one, two to four inches of snow on the high side. Temperatures on the cold side here early this week, minus 15 to maybe minus 25 across the region here on Monday morning. The radar is pretty quiet, maybe some flurries between Grand Prairie and Edmonton. And as we look at the satellite picture, much of the jet stream activity continues to be focused south of the region. We've got a very strong flow coming from the Pacific Ocean, delivering a lot of moisture to parts of the western U.S., California, the interior, uh, Rockies across the western United States. Over the top of that, again, we've just got a couple of really subtle disturbances. I'll go ahead and animate this. You see the very strong jet stream flow moving across the western U.S. into the southern United States. I'm actually visiting my wife's family down here in Florida where we had uh, really electric thunderstorms overnight. Uh, and then back at home, we've got snow in central Illinois and then up here across the prairie again, it's just cold and pretty quiet. You can see the, the purples and the blue shading uh, appearing here as we head into the overnight. Right there, you see it appearing over the prairie. That is just the very, very cold ground. We've got that snow and ice on the ground, the very cold temperatures down near the ground. We're seeing that on the infrared satellite picture. Now here's the jet stream pattern again. Uh, very strong area of low pressure just off the west coast of uh, the U.S. and Canada here, bringing a lot of moisture to uh, portions of British Columbia and then down the coast into California. And then here's the disturbance making its way through port parts of the Midwest. Uh, bringing rain to the southeast U.S. and then eventually uh, some very heavy snow to parts of the northeastern U.S. and uh, parts of uh, coastal uh, Canada there over um, uh, over uh, the, the Atlantic coast. Excuse me. Let's go ahead and animate this and take the drawings off. We'll watch the pattern unfold over the next five to ten days. And uh, really, as we get deeper into the week, here's what brings us the snow early week. Again, it's just a couple couple little subtle disturbances kind of breaking off from that trough to our west. They make their way through Tuesday through Thursday. And then as we get to the end of the week, we get a very amplified pattern like this, a trough to the west, ridging over the prairie, and then this really deep trough over the Great Lakes uh, into the Midwestern United States. So this is not going to signal a big warm up here, but it is going to signal a transition toward a quieter pattern across the prairie as we uh, kind of go through a, a period of disorganized upper level uh, flow. So let me go ahead and finish this loop here. This is as we get into the weekend, getting into early next week. Again, the very fast jet stream flow continues to be right here, that that border between uh, the, the, the troughing here across the Gulf of Alaska and then ridging across parts of the equatorial Pacific. But again, very strong jet stream flow uh, making its way from the Pacific into parts of the southwestern U.S. and then racing uh, across the southern United States. And we just, we have these maybe dis disorganized little uh, waves making their way through the prairie, but really, really weak upper level jet stream support. Uh, the stronger flow making its way well off to the north here. So the prairie, we're just kind of caught in between over the weekend into early next week. And that's going to lead to a relatively quiet pattern. It's not till we get to maybe mid to late next week that I think we'll see the next chance for some organized precipitation. So let's just kind of play this out over the next 10 days again. Here's your European operational run. Quiet Monday. So get into the day on Tuesday. Again, an area of low pressure tracking, kind of along Highway 16, but the snow is going to fall on the north side of the storm track. So uh, anywhere from two to six inches of snow across the northern half of the Prairie Provinces Tuesday and Wednesday. And then Wednesday and Thursday, an area of low pressure tracks south of the prairie uh, across the Dakotas into Minnesota and Wisconsin is where the area of low pressure tracks. But we do get a little bit of light snow across southern Alberta and southwestern Saskatchewan Wednesday into Wednesday night, maybe lingering into Thursday morning. As we take this into Thursday and Friday, maybe some snow across southern Alberta. Again, this area of low pressure now tracking into the Great Lakes as we get into Friday. This takes us into that quieter period. Again, mostly uh, going to be dominated by high pressure across the prairie. Over the weekend into early next week, you can see that here. This is Saturday, Sunday, March 18th and 19th. This would be Monday, Tuesday, March 20th and 21st, 22nd and 23rd. This is when I think we'll see the next kind of area of, uh, of upper level support start to make its way into the prairie. But again, we're talking 10 days out from now. So some light snow in a couple pockets of the prairie over the next couple of days, but that's it. 
before we really kind of shut things down days three through 10. So looking at this in terms of the probability of picking up three inches or more of total snowfall over the next seven days, can you see that corridor across the northern tier of the Prairie Provinces and then maybe extreme southern Alberta and Saskatchewan, you know, 30 to 40 percent chance of surpassing three inches. I think it's more likely we'll talk about a coating to maybe a couple of inches of snow. European Ensemble on the left, GFS Ensemble on the right, same story. Again, four to six inches of snow, maybe locally higher across the northern tier of the Prairie Provinces and then maybe a coating to a few inches of snow across southern Alberta, southwestern Saskatchewan. We'll animate the European Ensemble, jet stream winds. Again, you see all of the organized jet streams flow, the stronger support well south of the prairie. We're way up here. Again, just not much in the way of upper level support until, again, maybe we circle back to mid to late next week. 24 hour precipitation from the European Ensemble. This will help us kind of suss out the active and quiet periods. Again, Let's go ahead and bring this back. Uh, that chance for some light snow over the next couple of days. Here you go. This is uh, March 13th, 14th, snow north, 15th and 16th, snow across the south. As we get into the 17th, 18th and beyond, we are quiet across the prairie. We kind of reorganize as we get toward the 23rd, 24th and 25th. Still looks like much of the uh, more focused jet stream support ends up south of the prairie, but this is a ways out here, and this is back when we get into uh, the potential uh, to have some of these storms lift to the northeast and maybe bring us some more in the way of accumulating snow as we get toward the last week of March, maybe into, I can't believe we're already talking about maybe the first week of April. It is three weeks out there, but as we look deeper into the future, that's when I would think maybe the next chance for some organized precipitation would uh, visit the prairie. So colder overall as we come through the next 10 days, again, kind of uh, shots of colder air periods of warmer uh, temperatures here but still on the cold side of average so relatively warmer and then as we look at the uh the weeklies here this is the european weeklies a few days old i wish i had the uh the updated run that won't come out till this afternoon uh, but this takes us from march 15th through april 8 uh march 15th through april 15th uh, and again i just kind of want to illustrate here not a strong signal for a you know an extremely wet finish to march and beginning to april but still with that near average forecast and a pattern that uh, still makes me think that we could see some of these lows come in from Canada or uh, come in from California and then lift kind of from southwest and northeast as they make their way toward the Great Lakes and give us some of that snow on the north side. Again, though, I'm, I'm kind of speculating the last week of March or the first week to two weeks of April as being maybe the next run of active conditions across the Canadian prairie. Your temperatures, again, steady, a little bit on the cold side here in Calgary, still seeing those highs get up to or, or a little bit past the freezing mark. Edmonton, colder for the next few days, a little warmer as we get toward midweek. Regina, Saskatoon, and then we'll finish here in Winnipeg. I hope you have a wonderful week. Talk to you again next Monday, March 20th.